order. We start off with the Pledge of Allegiance, and it comes as no surprise that General Huber is prepared and ready for the assignment. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, General. One of the traditions that we have, Bill, is to honor a student veteran. Excellent. And one of the goals that we have, it's unwritten, is to be the most patriotic school in America. <laughs> Texas A&M is our goal in that regard, but I'd like to ask General Huber to take over, please. Thank you, Chairman Smith, <coughs> President McPhee, board members. Today I have the privilege to introduce Air Force veteran Clint Gregory. Two years after he graduated from McGavick High School in Nashville, he decided to join the United States Air Force, where he served for six years on active duty as a member of the Special Police, and specifically as a military working dog handler, gaining the experience of considerable work with the Secret Service, the DEA, Homeland Security, when it came to distinguished visitors and special events protection. He was then guided by his love of flying and decided that in 2019, he would leave his service to our nation in uniform and come here to MTSU to join uh, the tremendous aerospace program and intends in December of this year to graduate with a Bachelor's of Science in Aerospace concentrated on pro-pilot. Ladies and gentlemen, Air Force veteran Staff Sergeant Clint Gregory. Thank you, General Huber. Uh, I'd like to say a special thank you to uh, MTSU and uh, the Board of Trustees as well as the Charlie Daniel uh, Military Veterans Center. Uh, they've been nothing but helpful uh, from the very beginning when I originally separated. Uh, as a veteran, when we get out, we're used to like a very structured uh, life. And so coming out of that and having to establish that structure yourself, uh, it can be a challenge at times. But Charlie Daniel Center was there every step of the way to kind of help me uh, find that path to get even just register for classes and uh, find my way through the program. And if I ever needed any type of help, uh, or advice, they were always there to lend that helping hand. And I know uh, from personal experience, as well as you know, countless other veterans too that I'm in communication with, that if it wasn't for them and the help that they've given every step of the way, even to this day, uh, we probably wouldn't be in the seats that we're filling currently. Uh, there's other opportunities, but there's none that match or come close to the opportunities here at MTSU, especially with the community that's uh, here within the veterans, uh, taking care of each other still. Uh, so again, I appreciate everything that y'all have done for us. We have a small token. It's not so small, but we have a small token of appreciation from the Board of Trust. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. I'd like to give my picture with Huber every time I can. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Next, we have a couple of recognitions that are always fun, and this is fun for me since I like to think of myself as a horseman. We recognize the equestrian and stock horse team. If you're here and would come forward, uh, that, that would be appropriate and appreciated. Come on up, come on up in front. Wow, look at the hardware. <laughs> Today we'd like to recognize 
First, Coach Higgins and members of the equestrian team. Andrea Rego and members of the MTSU Stock Horse team. Dr. Jessica Carter, Director of the School of Ag. Thank you. Rhonda Hoffman, Director of the Horse Science Program. Thank you. Dr. Van Patten, are you, are you here? He's <laughs> Dean of College of Basic and Applied Sciences. Come on, come on up front, Doc. Mm -hmm. The MTSU Equestrian Team competes in Intercollegiate Horse Show Association's Hunter Seat Equitation on the Flat and Over Fences, Western Horsemanship, Ranch Riding, and Reining. All levels with no riding experience are happy to be part of the winning titles at a national level. Competitions are drawn on a draw format, meaning that riders draw the name of the horse they'll ride out of the hat on the day of the competition. That has to be a special challenge. <laughs> and they are not allowed to practice on that horse at all prior to competing, making it a test of the rider's skill on an unfamiliar horse. A team is comprised of riders from all levels with their points earned in competition, counting towards the team total. So no matter the level, the riders are equally vital to the team's success. The MTSU equestrian team has created 20 plus individual national champions over the years. Wow. Mm. Even adding it to the list this year, but for the first time in school history, first time the team brought home the coveted Western Team National Championship for the first time. Qualifying for the national, nationals is rigorous, multi-step process is an honor in and of itself. But to leave with all the hardware is an enormous honor. So let's give you a pause. <laughs> I'm, not, I feel compelled to complete my assignment here. The Stock Horse Team is a student club organization coached by the School of Ag instructor, Andrea Rego. Students compete in and host collegiate, youth, and amateur ranch horse competitions. Disciplines include cow work, ranch trail, ranch riding, and ranch reining classes. Team competes in two different national competitions in Texas every early spring um, among, uh, against top ranch horse teams across the nation. They emphasize the ability to educate riders of all backgrounds, usefulness, and versatility of riding a ranch-type horse. They are two-time Division II national champions and one-time Division I national champions and one-time Division I reserve national champions, along with three-time Division II reserve national champions. Their goal is to promote quality horsemanship and camaraderie in the local horse community. 12 to 18 students make up a team and typically ride a university-owned horse or a horse approved for personal use. So congratulations for all your recent achievements. We're so proud of your success, not only in the ring representing the MTSU, but more importantly, or most importantly, students will earn your degrees and become proud productive alums. We appreciate all the hard work. I can't imagine showing a horse that uh, I've never ridden before. That's a little bit like Dr. McPhee has with these board members. He gets here and has to ride a horse he doesn't know much about. So thank you so much, and let's give you a round of applause. That's it. Thank you. Great work. Mr. President, do you have opening remarks? Just briefly, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I also would like to offer my congratulations to our question team and our faculty and students. And it's really just one of the examples of the excellence at this university. If we were to bring every national championship or conference championship or award winners, we'll be here all day. And that would be a good problem to have. So congratulations to all of you. You make us very proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You ready? 
Now's the time for we're going to give a tribute to Joy Jacobs. Uh, and I'll read the script as presented. Today, on behalf of the MTSU Board of Trust and Dr. McPhee, I'd like to take a moment to share a tribute to Joy before we begin our formal part of the meeting. Joy Jacobs was a distinguished exec, a vast array of accolades and accomplishments earned during his 45-year involvement with Nashville's expansive healthcare community. More importantly, Joy was a devoted husband, father, grandfather, Blue Raider, considering his family to be his greatest success. Born in 53 in a small rural community in Marstown, Joy's the third child of Carl and Muriel Case Jacobs. Growing up with sig siblings Douglas, Mike, Abby, and Warren County, Joy developed, Joy developed a pride and love for his hometown, staying connected throughout his life and spending countless hours on his beloved farm, and still in a love of the land and livestock joined with his grandchildren. He enrolled at school here and pursued a bachelor's degree in accounting. Little did we know he would probably understand a balance sheet faster than any other trustee we've ever had, because he got to the bottom line quick. The following year, he married Debbie, loved his life, and began his family, where they raised two sons, Brent and Scott. Brent and his wife, Katie, expanded the Jacobs family tree with three children, Emmeline, Joey, Kate, and Hunt, who loved their grandfather on adventures their farm. He was devoted to his grandchildren. Following graduation, Joey began a professional career in health care and joined HCA, the world's leading provider of health care services. For 21 years, he served the company in a variety of roles, ultimately as president of HCA's Tennessee Division, where he was responsible for the company's operations, including four psychiatric hospitals, a meeting with long-term industry icon Clayton McCorder encouraged Joy's entrepreneurial nature in founding Psychiatric Solutions, where he served as president, CEO, and chairman. <clears throat> Under Joy's leadership, the company grew to more than two billion in business before being acquired, making him rich and helping MTSU. <laughs> no one to sit on the sidelines. Joy joined Acadia Healthcare serving as chairman and CEO until his retirement. Following his time at Acadia, Joy was elected to the board director of Cumberland Pharmaceuticals, where he served as lead <coughs> director and chairman of the board's Gov and Nom Committee. Recipient of the university honors and awards, many of them, including Champion Free Enterprise from College of Business, Joy was a dedicated alumnus of his alma mater. At MTSU, he served in a variety of volunteer roles and responsibility, including the MTSU Foundation Board of Trust, an inaugural member and probably the first person that Governor Haslam would choose to name, the Blue Raider Athletic Association, Jennings Jones College of Business Advisory Council. In 16, Governor Haslam selected him to serve on the initial board. Deeply committed, to seeing his alma mater fulfill its potential, Joy's leadership was instrumental in the university's highly successful 105 million centennial campaign. His philanthropic support enhanced and expanded programs across the campus, from athletics to the College of Business, where he established Joy Jacobs' Chair of Excellence, which for the uneducated, they doubled his investment. It was whatever he gave the state match. So it was a, a triple whammy. His commitment to his community was broad. He was involved in board member of Monroe Carroll Children's Hospital, chair of the Nashville Health Care Council, director of Federation of American Hospitals, National Association of Psychiatric Systems, and he was an owner of the Nashville Predators. With all his personal and professional success, Joey considered himself a country boy that did good. His traditional values and commitment to family and community are the cornerstones of his life and career. MTSU is better because of joy and his outstanding dedication commitment. And I'd like to add, I never asked him for anything that he didn't say yes. I think the only reason he just gave a million dollars to the athletic campaign is I didn't ask him for two. Uh, but he was the most generous, He'd give you his opinion, but he was the most 
generous guy that I, maybe I've ever known, and he won't he won't ever be replaced. But today I'd like to bring that to an end, and he'd say get on with it. <laughs> he was the best me runner of meetings. If you remember, I remember him telling Alan Thomas. Alan, you got 10 more minutes and you can carry it over to the next meeting, but that's how long we have on the agenda. <laughs> and, and that's it, because he knew what your time was worth. So I appreciate the privilege of being able to um, to read that. Ms. Floyd, would you call the roll? Yes, sir. Trustee Baker? Here. Trustee Boyd? Present. Trustee Carpenter? Present. Trustee Cottle? Here. Trustee DeLay? Here. Trustee Jones? Here. Chair Smith? Here. Vice Chair Karboyak? Here. Trustee Wright? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you, sir. Next is approval of the minutes. Has everybody and anybody that cared to read the minutes? And are there any corrections? Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. A motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All of, any discussion? Corrections? All approved. Say aye. Aye. Unanimous. Trustee Wright, it's my privilege to ask you for a committee report. Okay. Thank you, Chairman Smith. The Academic Affairs Student Life and Athletics Committee met on May 23, 2023. The committee approved the minutes from its March 14, 2023 meeting. Today, I would like to present two action items for the board's consideration. At our last committee meeting, the first item considered by the committee was tenure and promotion candidates presented by Provost Mark Burns. Faculty members applied for tenure and or promotion in September 2022 and have been reviewed by their department chair, school director, department, school committee, college committee, college dean, provost, and president, as stipulated by MTSU policies 204 tenure, 205 promotion of tenure, and tenurable faculty, and their respective college and department policies. The president and university provost recommend they be granted tenure and or promotion effective August 1, 2023. The committee unanimously approved 35 candidates recommended for tenure and 67 candidates for promotion. The second item before the committee was a request from appro for approval by Provost Burns for a Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity Management. The program will prepare individuals to assess the security needs of computer <coughs> network systems, recommend safeguard solutions and manage the implementation and maintenance of security devices, systems, and procedures. In accordance with University Policy 251, approval of academics program, academic programs, units, and modifications, all academic actions that require review and approval by THEC must be approved by the Board of Trustees. The committee also unanimously approved this new degree. Informational items before the committee included a presentation by faculty senate representatives, a presentation by our student trustee, an applications and admissions report, and an update on athletics. So, Mr. Chairman and Trustees, materials outlining the committee's action were made available for your review prior to this meeting and are in your board notebooks. And that concludes my report, and I would like to make a motion for approval. And, um, James, do we need two motions or one motion to approve both items? Uh, one motion. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Is there further discussion? Just a question, yes, and I apologize for this. Do, are we getting the audio being transmitted because the meetings need to be live? And so the question is... Let me verify. Is, okay. It is. Okay, awesome. Okay. Thank you. I didn't pick up. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's unanimous. 
Thank you. Audit and compliance is next, and Trustee Boyd, that's your department. Thank you, Chairman Smith. The Audit and Compliance Committee also met on May 23rd, 2023. The committee approved the minutes from its March 14th, 2023 meeting. At the meeting, there were no action items to be brought before the committee. However, there were some informational items and they included report on independence of chief audit executive, results of external reviews, the Tennessee Division of Claims and Risk Management letter report issued dated April 11, 2023, and the quarterly report, results of internal audit reports. The public meeting of the committee adjourned and the committee went into executive session to discuss audits and investigations. Mr. Chairman and trustees, that concludes my report. Although I would like to say this is the last meeting of our chief internal auditor, so we want to congratulate her and give, send her off into retirement with our best wishes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think we all agree she's been, done a great job in keeping us in the middle. Mm -hmm. So there's no motions to be made there. Thank you, Trustee. Trustee DeLay. Financial and Personnel Committee, you're up. Thank you, Chairman Smith. The Finance and Personnel Committee met on May 23rd, 2023. The committee approved the minutes of its March 14, 2023 meeting. Today, I would like to present eight action items for the board's consideration. The first item was a recommendation for approval of the revisions to policy 641, student fees, incidental charges, and refunds. Revisions included a change in the calculation of the Regional Scholars Program tuition rate and a change in the applicability of the E-rate. Both revisions to Policy 641 were approved unanimously by the committee. The second item was a recommendation for the approval of the 2024-25 capital outlay request. The proposed MTSU capital outlay request for fiscal year 2024-25 is the new academic building project. This project provides academic classrooms, class labs, faculty and staff offices, and support space for selected liberal arts departments and the Associated Center for Innovation and Leadership, History Museum, and MTSU archives and exhibit spaces. The proposed capital outlay request for 2024-25 was unanimously approved. The third item was the recommendation for approval of the 2024-25 capital disclosures. Disclosure projects include a public-private partnership for student housing, student athlete enhancement center addition, EV charging stations, new parking structure, and a renovation of the Student Recreation Center. Thank you. The committee unanimously approved the 2024-25 recommended capital disclosure. The fourth item was a recommendation for approval of the 2024-25 capital maintenance projects submittal. Capital maintenance requests for 13 projects covering a variety of maintenance needs for fiscal year 2024-25, totaling $17.4 million were recommended. Potential capital maintenance projects for an additional four years were presented as well, as the, as well and required by the THEC submission. The committee also unanimously approved the 2024-25 capital maintenance project submittal. The fifth item was a recommendation of approval for the proposed 2023-24 tuition, fees, and housing rates. With THEC adopting binding ranges for tuition and tuition plus mandatory fees at zero plus three percent on May 11th, the university proposed a 2.6 percent increase in undergraduate, graduate, and out-of-state tuition rates. 
This increase in undergraduate tuition complies with THEC's approved range of tuition. In addition, increases to five mandatory fees were recommended. An increase of 3% was recommended in housing rates. The committee approved all proposed increases to tuition, fees, and housing rates with an amendment to the increase in the athletic fee. The amendment included an additional $23 in the athletic fee to be used specifically for athletic capital projects. With this addition, the annual increase in tuition and mandatory fees for an undergraduate in-state student taking 15 credit hours will be $286, or a 2.98% overall increase, which still complies with THEC's combined range. I would also like to inform you that Tennessee law, under Tennessee Code Annotated 49-7-1603, we are required to give public notice of proposed increases to tuition and mandatory fees charged to in-state undergraduate students at least 15 days prior to holding a public meeting to adopt the increases. A link to the Board of Trustees homepage was made effective on May 25th for individuals to provide comments during the 15-day period required regarding tuition and fee increase proposals. The comment period ran from May 25th through June 9th at 4.30 Central Daylight Time. All public comments received have been collected and provided to you for <coughs> review. We appreciate the perspectives provided in the comments and have given careful consideration to the impact any increases will have on student affordability. In evaluating the proposal, the committee reviewed materials containing the tuition rate of other Tennessee public institutions as well as peer institutions and, that, and found that even with the proposed fee increase, MTSU ranked as very affordable in comparison. The seventh item was a recommendation for approval of the proposed 2023-24 employee compensation. University administration recommended using a salary funding received by the state to provide employees with a cost of living adjustment, which equates to 3.2% with a minimum of $1,250 increase. This scenario allows employees earning $39,062 or less to receive $1,250 while other employee increases will be based on 3.2% of their annual salary. Additional salary increases may occur contingent on the availability of resources after fall enrollment numbers have been finalized. The 2023-24 employee compensation pro proposal was also unanimously approved by the committee. The final item was a recommendation for approval of the 2022-23 estimated budget and the 2023-24 July budget. The estimated budget recommended is the final budget for the 2022-23 fiscal year and reflects adjustments needed for spring enrollment, additional funding provided through state appropriations, and other miscellaneous adjustments. The July budget recommended is the base budget for the upcoming 2023-24 fiscal year. It is based on a 2.5% tuition increase and includes mandatory fee increases, salary and operating appropriation increases approved by the General Assembly for 2023-24 and a flat enrollment. The committee unanimously approved the 2022-23 estimated budget and the 23-24 July budget. Mr. Chairman and trustees, the material outlining the action by this committee were made available for your review prior to this meeting and are contained in your board notebook. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report and I would like to make 
a motion for approval. All right. Thank you, Mr. Delay. Do I have a second? Second. Further discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a comment. Um, we did receive a copy of the letter addressed to you uh, by the uh, head of the Student Government Association regarding the uh, increase in the athletic fee. Um, and the letter expresses some concern. I think dismay is probably too strong a term, but um, some concern about the fact that of all of the fees that were scheduled for increase, the only one that was not presented to the SGA, as has been practice, uh, was the one on athletics. There was one fee that was a decrease of $10. That was also not presented, but I think that that's not one that would typically be of interest to the, to the SGA. Um, so first I have to apologize to the SGA because I was not aware of this practice. I think it is a good one. I think it's one that allows for transparency and discussion um, with the student body representatives to allow for a conversation around why uh, increases in fees are required and necessary. And, and as you can see from the materials that were circulated, um, the SGA Executive Committee did approve and support the other fee increases that were being discussed and were ultimately presented to this board for review and approval. So the point of my discussion here is to say that we had a lot of conversation at the committee meeting about this particular fee. Um, I think that we need to be cautious about not having, um, following this practice. It's not mandatory, I understand that, but I think it is good practice. It allows for transparency. And I think some of the discussion that we had at the committee meeting would have been helpful to share with the, ex with the executive committee at the, S uh, at the SGA so that they have a better understanding because as, as I think I mentioned during the committee meeting, I was concerned about the fact that not only were we increasing the fee in the original proposal, but we were increasing the amount of the increase. Um, and so to have that conversation, to have that transparency with the SGA representatives, I think would have been helpful. So my request going forward is that while it is not required, I think that we should be very cautious and we should be very respectful of the fact that the student body has an, has an opportunity to have um, review and an understanding of why things are being done to them because this is coming out of their pocketbook. So um, I, again, I apologize on my behalf for not realizing that this was a practice. This was a failure on our part to communicate this. The other thing that was a bit disturbing was that in the letter he mentioned that there was a request that was made by the SGA Executive Committee to the Athletics Department to see if there was going to be a need for a fee increase and there was no response. That was in the letter um, and maybe I misread it but I don't think so. Um, and so that also... Let there be light. <clears throat> I guess that's my notice to say um, but in any event, I think that that's something that we need to be as a board cognizant of, and I think we need to be respectful of the student body. And um, while I'm not going to vote against the board, rec the recommendation to this board for the fee increases, I do think we need to <coughs> tighten up our processes a bit. So um, thank you very much for the opportunity to express my well, I appreciate feeling. You bringing, I appreciate you bringing that up, and that's, that's so noted. Do you, do you have something? Yes. Um, Vice Chair, I, I agree with you, and I want the board to know that when I received the letter, I did meet, call, and had a meeting with the president of the SG, who's here, and uh, explained to him um, our process, and that in this case, um, it didn't, we should have given them a heads up, and promised that in the future, like we do for all the other increases, we will uh, follow that. Um, protocol. And so he indicated his uh, agreement and his understanding uh, with regard to that issue. I appreciate the follow-up on that, President McPhee. I think it's important to continue to evolve and develop the trust between the Board of Trustees and the student bodies, understanding that we take into account all of the requirements of the university, but also of the student body. Thank you. 
think I, they're, they're both excellent points. Is there further discussion? Well, I do want to say the other item in the letter was that they proposed that it be phased in over a three-year period. And um, with an increase of $12 for 2023 and 24, $12, 24, and 25, and the final 14 and 25, 26. So I'd like a little discussion on that, on um, maybe hearing from Dr. McPhee or Alan on what um, impact that would have with versus um, having the immediate fee. Because in my feeling, um, this would be a, um, a pretty easy concession for us to make based on um, the fact that we didn't really follow a protocol and how it had been handled in the past. Is there a comment on, on that? Alan is actually working on getting us um, a lease for our airport, so <laughs> I told him that was priority right now. Yeah. Um, state, there, 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 there could have been a better job done on that. There's no, there's no question. We went back to the state this year to get 30 something million so we could do the groundbreaking we had today. Or how much more? Yeah, it's it's a big number. And, and obviously, uh, inflation has, has wrecked the, or not wrecked, but inflation has impacted everybody's budget. And Murphy Center is 50 years old, and uh, I, would, I would recommend we go ahead and eat the dog food now and get it over with. But um, I'm, I'm ready to talk to you or JV well, or P. I don't know how other, well, I'm sorry, did you wanna? Yeah, no, I would just want to respond because you asked the specific questions of the administration. We made the recommendation to the board as I explained to the SGA president, um, and I think Vice Chair, you noted this, that the board has the right um, to make final decisions with regards to tuition and mandatory fees. And um, obviously, this is uh, a decision that the board has made. And uh, I think it would be appropriate to hear from board members as to their position on it, as you have asked, uh, Trustee Wright. OK. Well, and um, so maybe the best next step would be for me to amend the motion to change the fee increase to this amount. And then that gives us an opportunity for discussion from the other com the other board members on how to so handle So what is your motion? My motion would be to amend the additional fee um, to cover uh, the increase over a three-year period with an increase of $12 in 2023 and 24, $12 in 24 and 25, and $14 in 25 and 26. Um, uh, Mr. Chairman, just a point of clarification. This is on the 23, on the not the 15, yes, because on, that's, yes. Yes, that's on an the inflationary on the cost. On the $23. SGA knows that that is required. Um, yes. Right. So I just so, want to make sure. Math so the math isn't correct. <laughs> the math isn't correct. Well, yeah. you get the it, I just wanted to make sure that the $15 don't get caught. Right. So we, we need to rework the motion because the math isn't correct on 23. Okay. The math is 40. Eight. Right. So twenty three divided by three. No, it's not forty three divided by No, twenty three. The addition is well, twenty three. It doesn't right? have to be, but that's right. Okay. It's eight bucks a year. I mean three times eight twenty four. So seven dollars thirty three cents a year. Once once is this for a renovation, I think, to Murphy Center. Well, it's to that? catch up. Right. I I, it, I agree. Yes, and it'll be used for Murphy Center, but all that to say, we have a motion. Should we have us to amend the uh, to amend the previously made motion and second? So I'll second that, so we can have some discussion. That's the point. Okay, James, are we doing this uh, correct? We had a motion and a second, and now can we entertain? A, a, a right, we have a, a second motion. Uh, to amend uh, the original, I guess, action items to reflect the phase in of the student fee amount of $23. And we have a second of that motion. So that, that motion uh, to amend that provision of that specific action item is on the floor. 
And that's the first one we should vote on? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? So, so, so I do have some discussion. I guess my question would be, uh, President McPhee, when you spoke to the president of the SGA, was there any discussion of this other item that was brought up in the context of this, of this letter? The other item meaning? The, 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 the proposal that uh, Trustee Wright is referring to in the letter to phase it in. Did you all discuss that aspect of it during your discussion? And if so, what was their reaction? Did they withdraw that? No, we did not discuss that specifically. I made sure that uh, the SGA president knew the difference between the $15. The issue was really the $23 that had gone on top of that. But there was no discussion about, about phasing that in. Phasing that in. Okay. Other than that was in the letter that was presented. And just for clarification on the motion, is there a specific uh, phase period running three years in the am corresponding amounts yeah. that's on the record now? I would assume the third, third, and well, third. Third. I mean, yeah, third. Yeah, that's just fine. 23 eight, divided seven. by? Eight, 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 and seven. Yeah. Bill, you have uh, your first meeting. You want to get uh, into the frying pan? Or? Appreciate the opportunity, Chairman Smith. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I, I can see both sides of this and certainly the procedural side of it. Of course, I was unaware that that was uh, past policies. Also, uh, it's not policy. Or, practice. Uh, practice, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, like everyone else out here operating in the world, things have gone up significantly more than, you know, inflation, I think, adequately would, uh, would account for. So, uh, again, I'm sympathetic to the, to the students situation, but I would, uh, I personally would be in favor of just continuing off the $23. Uh, JB, do you, we'll just go around this. Yeah, way. for the good of the order. Uh, Andrew, do you, excuse me. Go ahead. Andrew, would you, do you have a... Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Chairman Smith. Uh, yeah, I, I've read the, the same letter that we all received. Attached to that, we received the 155, um, you know, reach, or the, the comments from, from students, from parents, from other concerned parties none of which were really in favor of this. You know, of course, I understand that the same, same issue. We, we were you know, fighting inflation, fighting all of these uh, reasons to, to drive up the price, but at the same time, we haven't effectively communicated that with students. You know, after speaking with SGA President Makai Mosby, I, that's, you know, one thing they offered was the, the phase-in method. Maybe after failing to meet that, that practice of you know, the initial reach out, that could be a, a way to reconcile with students. Uh, you know, beyond that, I think that being able to offer some additional communication in the future, maybe better representing, better marketing what these, these fees are supposed to go to. Um, you know, like we've said, this is just branded as an athletic fee, but you know, it's, going, right, it, it's going to you know, a potential facility uh, upgrade. And that's, you know, it may be the, the Murphy Center where we hold the basketball games, but on top of that, that's a graduation uh, you know, facility that we use. So that does impact you know, most students, right? That, that's something that everyone else can get bought into. So I think adding additional communication could help streamline this, uh, this conversation in the future. J.B., did you like comments? Not necessary. But For the good of the order, um, we were behind as a university <clears throat> in our facility makeup. Uh, and I see the Murphy Center as a music venue. We're in the music capital if there ever was one. If you go back and review, the judge came in here. We had logistical situations that got overcame because of our commitment they're coming in. But we need the Brooks and Dunns of the world here entertaining our students and on campus and continuing the momentum further. And that's, it, it isn't the question of athletics, it's a question of coming forward where we're already behind, personally speaking. And this has to do with other campuses and other structures. Uh, I think we, we just need to move forward. And this is no disregard for the SGA, which we respect. Uh, we were talking about other matters at hand, in my personal opinion. Tom? Uh, when I got the letter, I did some research concerning that uh, of increases. I agree with both Drew and JB that, that we certainly respect the student government organization. No one wants their cost of anything to go up. So, but in looking at this to see how we compared to the general economy and to our competitive schools in Tennessee, and, and Alan pro provided some of these numbers at, the, at our committee meetings, and 
the 10-year compounded annual growth rate of tuition and mandatory fees for MTSU is 3.7% for the 10 years ending in 2022. MTSU is the seventh lowest of all the LGI schools and the UT schools. So first of all, I think we've done a very good job, comparatively speaking, to our sister universities, if you want to call them that, in maintaining lower cost as such. Uh, so I commend the, the school in doing that. I would also say if you look at the last two years, we, there was no fee increase last year uh, or tuition increase. So if you look at the two years together, we're having a, on just about a 1.5% increase averaged over the two years. If you look at inflation, since for December 2020 to 2021, inflation was up 7%. December 21 to 22 is up 6.5%. The CPI, the computer price, the com consumer, excuse me, price index is up 4% May 23 over May 22. So for any of those measures, our increase is well below any of those comparative measures in the economy. Our costs as a university go up just like everybody else's costs. So I don't like to receive cost increases, but at the same time, if we're going to try to get close to keeping up with what needs to be done, then I think this increase is very reasonable. And again, as JB pointed out, and I think Drew as well, the Murphy Center is 50 years old. It's due for a major renovation. It's not just an athletic facility. We hold convocation there. We all hold graduations there, not just for MTSU, but other schools in the community hold graduations there. We hold concerts. We want to hold more concerts there. We have dance studios in there. It's a lot of other uses of Murphy Center other than basketball game. So I think what I've seen in terms of the plans for the renovation of Murphy Center, it benefits not just basketball, it, it's a whole new entrance and event that helps handicap or get rid of all those terrible steps <laughs> out front. It helps the music venue with new loading docks and th things like that. So it is a broad range improvement. It improves, if you've ever been there, the sound system. The first thing I heard when I came on this board, the Murphy Center sound system is horrible. You know, huh? improve it. Yeah. So, so that's the first thing I heard. So it improves that as well and, and improves the video capability in the Murphy Center. So I think it has broad improvement, capital improvement opportunities for the Murphy Center. And again, I think the cost and this won't, this $23 won't cover the entire cost. It only gets us part the way there, but it gets us at least part the way there to catch up on 50 years of deferred maintenance. And again, I, comparatively speaking, I think it's very appropriate and a reasonable increase compared to what we're seeing in the economy and what we've seen at sister schools. P? Uh, my opinion is very much like Tom's opinion in that the Murphy Center is a multi-use facility, and although it does apply to athletics, it's also a front door to the university. Many students who come choose to come to school here are first introduced by, to this school through the Murphy Center, through their high school experiences, through the, their high school graduations, and through watching others graduate from this university. Uh, we all were at a uh, beautiful groundbreaking today of a new building we're going to build in a new building we have just built. If we were building those buildings and we were to take the tack that we're not going to maintain those buildings and we're not going to expect those buildings to be at a state-of-the-art process, we shouldn't probably build them. It, it, in building them, I think our, our uh, responsibility as a board is to make sure we maintain these assets and take care of these assets. I also am one who would like fees to never go up. Um, however, we have uh, our costs of running our university are continuing to, to go up from faculty, staff, et cetera. And uh, $23 is certainly not an insignificant amount of money, but it's also not an overwhelming amount of money. And in light of the 50 year and the state of uh, uh, deferred maintenance in that facility, uh, 
I would support the $23 increase. Professor Cottle? Oh, sorry, excuse me. Just a couple of questions. Um, number one is, is the increase proposed permanent or temporary just for the renovation? It's permanent. Department? It's permanent. Okay, well, that's going to answer a lot of my other questions, too. <clears throat> since, um, since the facility, I know athletics rents the facility. So does graduation. They have to pay a fee when the, the graduation group goes there. And, of course, when an outside entity comes in, they have to pay a fee. So it's not really exclusively an athletics thing. We've agreed on that. Is there any way we could <clears throat> maybe call this something different rather than lump it in with athletics? I think that might. Let me say this. I wish we had, but I think, yeah, right. I think the horse is out of that. Okay, the horse is all right. Well, that was the only, the only couple of questions. That last time. I, I would yeah, I, we, yeah. we didn't present it correctly. However, I, I don't think there's any way to, to take back uh, okay. the two hours we've been on it. Okay. I mean, that's just um, my. I, I don't, I mean, I don't have a problem with the $23, and I wouldn't have a problem spreading it out either, either way. My, my only comments is I, I run the board, and I'm going to take whatever you guys are. You guys decide on. I've had thousands of customers, and I've never had one say, "Thank you, sir, for going up." <laughs> uh, so it's. Uh, so the question before the board, as I understand it at this point, is not whether or not the 23 is included. It's whether or not the increase is in spaced right. out. Correct. Correct. And I would like to understand why it's too late to change the name. Just explain. Well, it's not too late, but I'm, it doesn't. I don't think it. I don't think it changes the. Uh, I'm happy it's to change. It's out there already. I mean, I'd love to change okay. it. Now. I wish I had that to do over. Okay. I don't. I don't see how okay. that's going to change. It it would change the perception of the students, though. I think because right now they're going to be negative against athletics. They're going to go. This is an athletic fee. I don't do anything with athletics, and that's some of the comments that were in those 155. I I'll be honest with you. I read every single 155 comments um, there was a bigger issue and I won't bring that up because it'll get us in another discussion but the athletic thing was a big thing for them there were 41 different mentions of athletics in out of those 155 it was mentioned so it, it may take a well it, it's, it, it's interesting we, <clears throat> we amortize 170 or 80 million right. fees. we have 12 different fees uh, from student center if you're a commuter, no, you don't the, use the student center. What are those categories? I mean, if you, uh, so we, 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 we have a number of, this isn't the only fee. We got a, more than 10 fees, parking, et cetera. So. Technology, we got technology. Technology. And, and all of it's needed. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that this isn't an outlier. So we have a motion. Well, and I do just yeah. want to make one comment because I don't want to give the impression I'm against the renovation of the Murphy Center. That is in no way my position. My position is simply I wanted a discussion on whether or not phasing it in would be harmful in any way and could we still accomplish the renovation in a reasonable amount of time and also um, as I spoke at the committee meeting, I, my concern was that it's called an athletic. Uh, Chairman. I, I'm appreciative of you bringing, bringing it up. We have an open discussion about it. Chairman Smith, Scott, just, yes, Tom. I think the thought process is that this fee covers the entire renovation of Murphy Center. This fee will not cover the entire renovation of the Murphy Center. This fee at a 5% interest rate covers about $13, $14 million of debt. The Murphy Center renovation is going to be a, three times, at least three times now with inflation, four times that cost. So this is a down payment as such to get us to a renovation of Murphy Center. And as we said, we're way behind. If you've been to Tennessee Tech's Eblen Center, I think's the name of it, there it, it is pretty neat. It's got very good visuals. It's got video board, when I say visuals, video board, leather chair back seats, I mean, all around. I mean, it, it is very nicely done. We are behind. We're, we're in a catch-up mode. And just want to make sure, because people understand, this does not get us home. 
this gets us part of the way home. So this, this is going to be a multi, what's the right word, multi-initiative to get this done. So. Well, thanks to our board, we have raised nearly $20 million, too, which be 20 times anything athletics ever raised before. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, so it, it, there is some buy-in like our building today. If that's further discussion, if you want to keep the motion on the table, we'll, we'll call for a roll call vote. I don't think a boys vote would be appropriate at this point. Trustee Baker? No. Trustee Boyd? No. Trustee Cottle? Yes. Trustee DeLay? No. Trustee Jones? No. Chair Smith? No. Vice Chair Carboyak? No. Trustee Wright? Yes. Motion fails. Thank you for a good discussion. Mm -hmm. Colleagues, this, as this semester comes to an end, it's we, time for change. We still, we still have the main motion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't realize TV was out either. Uh -huh. uh, so we go back to the original motion. It's been made and seconded, and all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So next is to recognize Trustee Collar for his two years of hard service as our faculty trustee. You've served outstanding representatives of your peers, and we appreciate your engagement. And I'd like to ask President McPhee to introduce our New trustees, and one's not so new. That's right. <laughs> She's back. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, trustee, you may recall that the Faculty Senate developed a process in which they select the faculty trustee. The Senate recently completed that process, and today I would like to introduce, it's my pleasure to introduce our, our newest uh, for next year, a new trustee. But you said she's no stranger uh, to this body. Uh, faculty trustee, Dr. Mary Martin. And she come forward. Trustee Martin, I'll just give a few words about her background. <laughs> trustee Martin is a professor in the Department of Mathematical Sciences, earning a bachelor's degree in science and mathematics at MTSU. Uh, she studied uh, communicative ring theory and earned her master's and PhD at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. Uh, in her 20 plus years at MTSU, Dr. Martin has taught undergraduate and graduate courses, managed multiple federal grants to benefit uh, Tennessee middle and high school teachers, and she served as the faculty senate president during the year of transition of this new board. She brings a very strong dedication to our students and to the board as a faculty representative. Uh, with her, as she assumes her second appointment as faculty trustee to the board. Congratulations, Trustee Martin. And on behalf of the board, we welcome you back and look forward to working with you. A little side note, her mother was dean of the graduate school when I became president, and so she has great, deep, roots at this university. Let's give a round of applause. Would you like some comments? Um, sure, thank you. I'll keep them very brief. I would like to thank Rick for his, his uh, diligence this past two years, and I would certainly like to thank all the board members for their gracious welcome. I'm glad to be with you this next two years and look forward to what we can do. This Board of Trustees has worked diligently since its inception to support MTSU's institutional health and the pursuit of its mission. And I'm looking forward to being able to help look at the role of MTSU as the highest achieving institution of higher education in the state. So thank you all for welcoming back. Thank you. Rick, I apologize. I, I missed giving you the opportunity to to give a farewell speech. Oh, I, don't, I don't have a farewell speech, really. I, I just want to thank you guys for uh, working with me. It's been a pleasure to get to know each one of you and uh, to spend a little time together. And you've helped me understand how the workings of the university um, 
takes place outside of my understanding as a faculty member. And I hope I was able to bring some of the faculty perspective, which I know that Mary's really good at because she has a good experience uh, before. But thank you guys very much. It's been a pleasure. Well, we're changing student trustees on this time. And Andrew, uh, you've been a, a good addition, attentive and loyal in your uh, attendance. And we'd like to tell you thank you and appreciate it. You, do you have comments you'd like to make? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you, Chairman Smith. I want to thank the, the board, faculty, and staff, and students of MTSU for this opportunity. It's been a fantastic 12 months serving on the board. Uh, and hopefully, and as Rick said, I hope I brought some of the student perspective to the conversations and help you know, uh, provide that, you know, that student voice here on the board. So I appreciate the, the support from each of you, and I, I look forward to serving in different capacities moving forward. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I would like to give you a summary of the selection process for the new student trustee. Uh, this process uh, was managed by a very capable Office of Vice President for Student Affairs under Dr. Deb Sells, uh, working with the Student Government Association. Applications were submitted to the SGA office. Once the applications were received, recipients were sent a confirmation email the SGA Executive Board reviewed the applications and selected applicants, applicants to be interviewed. So the SGA selected those applicants to be interviewed. Applicants were then notified that they had been selected for an interview. After the interviews were conducted, the three finalist applications were sent to my office, the Office of the President. And I personally interviewed the top three applicants and I now have a recommendation for your consideration. The board uh, must, by bylaws, vote on this. Mr. Chairman and trustees, it is my honor to recommend Ms. Molly Mims as our next student trustee. Molly has completed her undergraduate degree and is pursuing her graduate degree in public health. Academically, Molly's a high school achieving student, a very high achieving student, excelling in the classroom as well as being active in organization both on and off campus. Uh, Molly will be a terrific representative of our student body in her work as a trustee. So today I'm pleased to introduce to you Ms. Molly Mims. Molly, would you please stand and let's recognize you. You're welcome to have remarks if you'd like some. It's not required. And after her remarks, obviously, we have to vote. Uh, the board has to vote on. Good afternoon. Um, as President McPhee said, my name is Molly Mim, and I am grateful for the opportunity to work with you guys this upcoming year. I have been in the Murfreesboro com community since the day I was born, so I'm excited to continue um, to represent MTSU and Murfreesboro as a community. Um, I have served in many different roles during my undergrad, um, directly related to student affairs, and uh, as he mentioned, I have done well academically throughout my undergrad, so I'm excited to continue both of those endeavors throughout this opportunity during my um, graduate program in public health. It's, it was great having lunch with you guys earlier, and I look forward to um, this upcoming year. Thank you. You have a seat next to Andrew. Be great. We need a motion to approve. Um, I'd like to move that we approve the recommendation of Ms. Molly Mim. Do we second. have a second? Second. I'm sure there are seven seconds. <laughs> Everybody. All of us want some of that. So <laughs> any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Molly, I might mention to you, uh, Mary is well aware of this, but another precedent that we've set, not, not certainly not a, a rule, but it's the chairman's duty to appoint committees. And I'd like to ask you to be on all the committees. 
we only have three or four. I mean, we have three. three. We have three committees. And uh, hopefully you would re teach us something and you would learn something as well. So if you don't want to be for whatever reason, just, just let James know and uh, that would be great. But other than that, we'd like to include you on every discussion. I think Andrew will tell you we weighed his thoughts and welcomed his thoughts. Mary obviously knows that that's, that's not to rule, but to practice it. One of the beauties of a small board that Governor Haslam had enough sense to do is that we all can serve on each committee. So if you want input you, and you don't get it, it's your fault, not, not, not the system. <laughs> all right, so what's next? President. Ms. President? Yes. yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, as always, um, I appreciate the opportunity to briefly update you on matters and activities of the university since our last meeting. And as always, I start with um, the recruitment for fall of 2023 and give you an update as to where we are. Um, just briefly, I want to share that as of June uh, 1, the, June the 1st, new freshman applications are up 1,574 students which is a 13% increase from, uh, compared to last year. Uh, freshmen newly admitted for the fall are up uh, by 408, which is a 5% increase. And we are really pleased knowing the state of the community college enrollment that has been declining significantly. We're seeing that a new transfer applications are up uh, by 122 students, which is a 5.1% increase. And that just didn't happen by accident. It's a lot of work with our folks uh, in the community college working in partnership. Um, and then our transfer newly admitted students for fall uh, up by 2.5%. We have just completed five out of what will be a total of 16 freshman custom orientation session. And, and I think that's a good indication in terms of, because uh, this is just as of June 1. And we have completed four out of what will be a total of seven uh, custom, custom orientation for transfer students. Uh, registration for our custom orientation program remains strong, reflecting these <coughs> increase in newly admitted freshmen and transfer students. Other early indicators, uh, housing applications and FAFSA applications are both above what we expect to see at this point during the summer. So another ver set of variables that point in the, in the positive direction. And our earliest check on actual enrollment for new undergraduate students, that's not only first-time freshmen, but all undergraduate students, we are above where we were at this point last year for most of our recruitment territories. Now, with regards to graduate students, this is our challenge. As of June 9th, enrollment uh, for our graduate students are down by 198 students, which is a 12.3%. I know our graduate school uh, are working and the provosts are, are working on that. However, as we all know, graduate students tend to enroll at the very last moment. That's been the trend for years. Um, and we have 70 days until the start of classes. Uh, I'm still optimistic that our numbers will be above last year, uh, but there still is time. and. Um, uh, we will continue to work uh, very hard as a staff and faculty. And I do want to say I appreciate the efforts, the hard work of our recruiters, our faculty, uh, program directors, and, and clearly the Office of Student Affairs. They've done a tremendous job in light of the declining enrollment across the country. Every time you read an article, in higher education, uh, there is what is called the, the cliff, the enrollment cliff. And for us to be at least holding our own um, at this point, again, we still have uh, several months to go. Uh, I'm very pleased with that. Now, this other update I'm really excited to share with you because you all have been reading, we all have been reading in the newspaper about 
decline in third grade reading in our state. Uh, and I want to report to you, very pleased with this, that MTSU is recognized by the National Council on Teacher Quality. Just a week ago, we were informed by this council uh, that our undergraduate teacher preparation program was recognized uh, on teacher quality and excellence among the best in preparing future elementary teachers to teach children to read, earning an A plus distinction in the council's new report. And that report was entitled Teacher Prep Review, Strengthening Elementary Reading Instruction. MTS program is among just only 48 nationwide and only two in Tennessee, in the two universities in Tennessee highlighted by the council for going above and beyond the standards set by the literacy experts for coverage of most effective methods of reading instruction, often called, quote, the science of reading. So I'd like to offer my congratulations to our interim dean, Rick Van Osdale, and the elementary education teachers and professors uh, for their outstanding work. What we've been reading about in the percentage of third graders just in the state tests that was administered, this says that MTSU is a lead, and hopefully the legislator would be investing more resources in education and particularly MTSU um, program. So this is something, Mr. Chairman, that I think when we hit the legislative um, group uh, downtown next year, we need to have big signs and make sure that they know rather than spending money on other kinds of things that they need to put some money into education uh, along with some of the other initiatives that we have. And then I would like to report that uh, you've heard about our Tennessee Teach Back program initiative that the chairman and the Frisk family have been involved with. And on May 8th, the chairman Smith and I, along with individuals from the College of Education and the executive director, Dave Mansori, from the State Collaborative of Reforming Education, also known as SCORE, formally, we formally announced our partnership uh, for the Tennessee Teach Back Initiative, which is an, an innovative program to recruit prospective teachers from school districts with high needs, rural areas, urban areas in the state to train them at MTSU College of Education and return them to teach in their local district. Again, anytime you read the newspaper, listen to, I saw a national say on ABC just a couple of days ago about the severe shortage of teachers not only people going into teaching, but also those are leaving uh, the teaching profession. And so this is, a, again, another initiative that the state really needs to support. And as part of that commitment from SCORE, they will provide funding. We've received a significant grant in support of the recruitment of new uh, and the engagement of specialists to recruit teachers for this particular program. We've actually have gotten a grant of $90,000 $90, a year over a three-year period uh, to support this particular initiative. And again, I just really want to emphasize uh, the role that uh, Chairman Smith and uh, the Frisk, Tracy Frisk and Bill Frisk, we worked on this project almost a year and a half ago. And to finally see this come forth with seed money given by SCORE to recruit the best and brightest in the teaching field, I think it's a, a wonderful, wonderful initiative. So we're extremely excited about this. And then finally, uh, a report that I don't like to give. I see Dr. Sells is putting her head down. Mm -hmm. uh, it is with mixed emotions that I recognize three incredible members of our True Blue family who will be retiring within the next few weeks. And first, we have Dr. Deb Sells, Vice President for Student Affairs 
and Vice Provost of Enrollment Services, Diane Snodgrass, Interim Chief Executive, Audit and Consulting Services, and Ms. Sarah Sudak, Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and Dean of Students. We're losing a lot of excellence, many, many years of incredible service. All these accolades that you're hearing, these are the individuals that are really responsible for getting the university where it is. And so it is uh, my honor to, on, rep, on part of the university representing our faculty and staff, to say thank you all uh, for the foundation that you've laid, the incredible work that you've done to make this university what it is today. And I think they deserve it. Their combined service at MTSU for these three individuals is a century, 100 years, and the impact of their dedication will never be forgotten. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's my report. Thank you. Mr. President, how many uh, teach back students are our goal? <coughs> I know it's great, so that's why I want to say it. How, our goal is to have how many? Our goal, and this is stretch, and when I say this, I know uh, the staff, they cringe. It's okay. um, but we would like to, in the first year, have an arranged recruit 20 to 50 students with each year following 50 to 100. Just think the difference that would make over a period of time. And part of this is to also provide support, financial support, very much like what we have done with the Meharry uh, medical degree program. And in fact, we had our first cohort graduated this May in the Meharry program. And they will be going into medical school, and after three years, they'll be going to a rural area. And so we do need support. I had a conversation uh, with the um, chairman of the State Board of Education a couple of weeks ago and inviting him to our campus so that he can learn about this program and provide some support and giving us resources to help build to go with what score. So we're, this, this could very well be <coughs> transformative. That leads to my remarks. I, I didn't ask you to set that up, but if our goal is to change lives, nobody changed more lives than a teacher. And if we have 50, and 50 if we have 200, that we turn out to go to rural areas and teach and change lives, it's gonna be more transformative than any other program that, that we've got because they'll change thousands of lives. So I think it's right in line with our mission. And I, your president's a pretty good peddler because <laughs> we went and peddled this to the Friss and, and they bought it. So I, I'd like to thank you for being uh, your chairman and the privilege of serving MTSU and looking forward to uh, a number of great announcements between now and the next meeting. So we're adjourned. So did you have? Thank you. 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 Thank